Hello Earthlings, my name is Alexander Vergara, Alex V, and welcome to the Earth Fund Contributor Spotlight. In today's episode, we'll be discussing blockchain programming and contract development. I'm very, very excited today because Michael Fellows will be joining us. And Michael Fellows is actually our lead blockchain developer. Uh, here he is, a uh, member of the Silicon Valley Blockchain Society and crypto enthusiast and founder of multiple seven figure businesses in development and e-commerce. He's a self-taught software programmer and ran an agency with 25 employees. Here's Mr. Michael Fellows, man. What's up, sir? Oh, what's How are up? you? Hey. I'm great, man. How are you? Thanks for having me on. I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm happy to be here with you. Um, so I, I, the first question, you know, when I when I think about this, that makes that I, I think about is uh, what got you into cryptocurrency? Yeah, I guess my background got in, into entrepreneurship and technology and software development many years ago. Um, been programming for about a decade now um, and really was at a Thanksgiving dinner and a friend of mine was just kind of dove in head into the space. And this was like, I can't remember if it was 2012 or 2013. Um, I believe it was 2012. And he was like, hey, you need to check out this Bitcoin thing. Um, and I had started a program and had seen it on the, uh, the front page of Hacker News. So I, I kind of like did a little bit of research, but didn't quite get why it was super valuable per se. Um, ended up trying to sign up for Mt. Gox and that was just a horrible process and then they got hacked and, and kind of forgot about it. But that's how I got familiar with the space. So for, for the people who are a little bit newer to the space, what's what's Mount Gox? And for Mount me too. Gox was, uh, it was like the first major crypto exchange. Like prior to Mount Gox, you, there was like a dude that you would PayPal money and he would send you Bitcoin. Like it was super sketch, right? Did he wear like and a trench coat? <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. This guy was a legend though. There's like old YouTube videos you can go see and like he's, showing you how to like buy Bitcoin with PayPal. That's awesome. Um, but anyways, so Mt. Gox, uh, it was like a magic the gathering site and they pivoted to a, a Bitcoin exchange. And I mean, it's a it, Google Mt. Gox. It's a pretty egregious security story and they lost all the customer funds and everything. Ooh. So it was a, a blessing because I, I didn't have a hardware wallet either. So um, didn't know, like they didn't really even make hardware wallets back then. You had to like, put it on your laptop or whatever. And I just definitely would have lost all my money. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's, the, that's the, Mt. Gox. The time of growing pains, right? Yeah. 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 I think Bitcoin was, it was, it was definitely under a hundred bucks. It was like probably like 30, 20, 30 bucks when I first wow. got <laughs> tuned into it. Yeah. That's mind blowing to think. And today, yeah. I, I, don't quote me on this guys, but today I think it's at 54,000. That's crazy. Yeah. Man. That is crazy. So, um, I, you know, talking a little bit about software development and uh, that side of things, what what moment in your life just you had that? What, what moment did you just have that aha moment where you knew you wanted to to work on programming? Uh, programming, I mean, I just always wanted to build things, but I didn't have any money, so it was either like scrape up money, pay somebody to build it, or learn to do it myself. Um, so I went the ladder out and, you know, there's pros and cons to that. In hindsight, I probably would have done things a little bit differently. What, but what, what was that? Um, what, what was that? Louder out? Uh, just learn to build it myself. Oh, okay. And yeah. So, I mean, in hindsight, I would have done things a little bit differently, but, you know, it worked out pretty well. And I'm fortunate that I can build things now. That's great. I mean, it's like a superpower. Yeah, right. I mean, there, there's always that exciting feeling about people who are self taught, right? Who just go in there and, and just learn by, by, so one, one of our, one of our yeah. team members said, uh, that, what was it? The, the pioneers, no, the trailblazers. You could always tell who a trailblazer is by the arrows in their back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Earth Fund, right? And the smart contracts in Earth Fund, um, since you know you are the the lead developer on that side of things. What what makes the project so unique? Yeah, I mean, permissionless decentralized giving is pretty cool in my opinion. Like the ability to have a bunch of, let's say, for, you know, people or addresses vote for specific causes um, and be able to programmatically take in different types of currencies to fund projects and to be able to transparently incentivize 
certain projects, I think it's super interesting. And I mean, if you just look at the percentage of funds raised that actually go to support the causes in the traditional nonprofit world, um, I mean, it's pretty safe to say like that system's broken. So the more that we can do to create a more transparent, lower fee um, way of giving, I think is really cool. And, and it's interesting because you don't, you don't really know where that money goes, right? When you give to a, a nonprofit. Yeah. Also like the tracking is a little suspect too. I mean, like if you go donate to something at Goodwill, they like give you a piece of paper and it's like, yeah, thanks. Um, <laughs> I think it's, you know, I think it's kind of cool to like incentivize people with like NFTs and do like kind of custom unique, um, things for donating or like hooking in with other protocols programmatically. So like you have all these companies like, uh, Tom's shoes or like, Oh, you know, e-commerce businesses, we donate X percent of our proceeds to whatever cause it's like, well, do you like how transparent is that? And if you have it plugged in in a decentralized fashion on the blockchain, like it all can happen automatically in a super transparent way. Um, so, I mean, it's like the definition of show your receipts, right? I think it's a cool way to, to put your money where your mouth is literally. I think, I think also to build on that, the, the, another positive component is the fact that you can do it internationally without having to worry about borders or, you know, what type of cash that country is dealing with. Right. Exactly. Like it, it's pretty, I mean, to be fair, like I've never personally managed a campaign that was in like Africa or something, but I can imagine it's a headache getting funds from multiple countries, getting them settled in the local currency. And like, it's, I'm sure there's tons of fees eaten up along the way. Like that's a fact. So agreed. Four of those payments are great. So there, there's a, there's a, a couple components to the earth fund smart contracts. Right. And I'm going to, I'm going to kind of say them how I understand it. And I've been, I've been within sure. this project for four months. Um, so, you know, please correct me. Um, there's a staking component to it, right? Mm-hmm. Where everybody who has a token can stake, and then that allows them to vote on the DAO, correct? Correct. Um, there's also a side uh, that that we're building out uh, the plat the giving platform itself, right? Yep. What, uh, you know, right now, what what is your if you had to choose one? What's your favorite part of that? Well, I, so personally, like I think the concept of staking is really cool because it's not something that exists in traditional finance and in like the traditional world. Like obviously you have a smart contract for, for like the contribution side, you have a smart contract. that's like, okay, here's how much we want to raise. Here's who it goes to. Here's the start or end date. Here is, you know, different parameters and like raise the funds can distribute the funds. And we have like governance around that. Like that's super cool. But to me, like the stakings adds a pretty insane layer of one, you're like, you're, you're getting rewards for staking. Like you're getting a piece of the action. Um, I mean, two, it allows you to drive the platform, right? Like how, how many times you invest in a company and you know, for you to vote at a shareholder meeting, like your vote's not going to mean anything and it's going to be like really difficult. But like when we propose, propose something with the DAO, it's like anybody who stake can like really easily make a difference. And you can see in real time, like where that voting's at. And I was actually, there's a project that I um, follow and they kind of put a last minute call to a lot of their shareholders yesterday because they needed more votes for a proposal and they got them. Um, so I think it's a really cool component and something that just doesn't exist in today's financial landscape. I like, I like the fact that, uh, we are community based, right? So there's a really strong push towards community, but I also like the fact that people get rewarded for participating in the community. I think that's such a great concept. And this is something that like really wasn't on our radar, but shout out to discord. I forget who it was. They, they asked like, are you guys doing a quadratic funding model for like, we, we plan on adding, you know, sprinkling a little bit of the earth fund into these donations too, and like helping incentivize these projects. And if you're not familiar with the quadratic funding model and what that formula is, it's really, so imagine like if you match a contribution dollar for dollar, like that, if you're a whale and you want to put like, maybe it's, maybe if you're a whale and it's a cause that like you're going to indirectly benefit from, whether it's, you know, that's great, or there could be something nefarious behind there. And it's like, 
we donate a percentage of the total contribution as a whale, like you can have a huge impact, but with the quadratic on the quadratic um, formula for distributing additional rewards, then it's based on how many people get behind it. So whether you're a whale or not, your, your contribution amount has much less of an effect on the bonus rewards. It could be a million people that donated a very small amount and that project's going to get a lot more funding than one guy that donates a million dollars or whatever. That's, that's outstanding, man. You know, they, they, I remember yeah. they, they sent that and I was like, what is that? And thankfully, uh, Adam yeah. in the discord, like sent an article explaining what it was. So I, and, uh, get which is a really cool project for just kind of like helping contribute to various decentralized development initiatives uses that sort of model. And I, I think it's a great way to do things. And I, I think it makes things a lot more fair. And, and I, I want to talk back about the discord cause it's very important, right? Um, one, you know, one, it's very important for us that uh, people can see that there's transparency. So within the Discord, we actually have a development text channel, uh, which we encourage everybody to go to the Discord and, and see it. Everyone can see it. Only developers can write in it. Um, but what I thought was really interesting, we already had one person at say like, hey, I'm in software. I'm a developer. Like, how can I join the team? Um, I want to talk a little bit on your end, Michael, and I, you, I, and the reason I want to is because you immediately said yes, like we, we want people's help. Um, you know, what, what's your call to action for those people that are in there or for anybody listening? Uh, yeah, drop us, drop us on the discord and we have the earthfund.io slash contributors yep, page. Yep, earthfund.io forward slash contributors and click on become a contributor and you fill out a form yeah. and we get that form. Fill that out. Alex, you, you are the first one to receive all those notifications, correct? Uh, I, I, uh, I can be. <laughs> yeah. So I, I know you're, you're like the king of, res you're the king of response and the responsiveness and being on the ball. So, <laughs> Thank you. um, I would say Thank if you, you fill that out, definitely. I mean, if you have a background in solidity or front end development with like react JS and have a background and just, or done anything front end in web three, um, you know, we'd love to talk with you. I mean, super, I, I think personally, like I'm a fan of when people from the community get involved and become key contributors on the team. I think that just like is a big grassroots effort as opposed to like going out and hiring a bunch of agencies who may or may not actually want to work on it. You know what I mean? And, and it's interesting because we, we just got off of a call and, um, the, the, the person who's brought this whole super team together is Adam Bolt. And, you know, you can see him in the discord and the telegram, um, but what was interesting was every time I get off of a call with Adam, uh, he always asked me and a new member comes onto the team. Do you think they're passionate about it? Right? Mm -hmm. And you get that. And, and everybody that's on the team is just super passionate about it. And all our, our conversations and talks, like you just feel the energy coming out and the cohesion. We just have this synergy between us. It's, it's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. To yeah, see. it's fun. I mean, I, and like I said, man, grab the more grassroots you can get, like that's, that's the way to go in crypto. So I, I want to shift gears here a little bit. Um, you and I had talked about this question a while ago and I didn't, I didn't ask it again today. So if I catch you off guard, I'm sorry. Um, but can you tell me about a mentor or hero you had, uh, and that you looked up to and, and then that helped you become who you are today? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've got a couple of mentors that I owe a lot of my, um, career to, to be honest. Uh, one is, uh, there's a guy, Kyle, I don't really stay in touch with him a whole lot anymore. Um, but he is, he taught me a lot about programming um, really early on when I was getting started. Like he, he basically as a, a solo developer built the groundwork for multiple billion dollar companies. Um, I know two, two, two companies that he wrote like the first version of their software where they ended up either going public or selling for, you know, 10 figures. So I think that's pretty cool. Shout out to Kyle. Um, Come join us in the discord. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I actually don't know what he's doing these days. Uh, and then my friend who got me into crypto, Andrew, I mean, he's still a good buddy and, uh, I'm hanging out with him quite a bit. And, um, he, yeah, he's a, he's a big, he's a big reason I, I spent so much time in the space and owe a lot of success to him. Um, because he really turned me on to the possibilities of what or the possibilities of what you can do in crypto, but more importantly, the reasons why it's decentralization is incredibly important. That's, that's, 
you know, I, I want to I want to think of the, my next question, which has to deal with uh, the ladies at uh, Upstate Interactive. Right. So you talked about the potential mm -hmm. of decentralization. Right. Uh, Upstate Interactive, for people who don't know, is a woman uh, owned and operated um, consulting group and uh, Dow group. Correct. Uh, and they're yeah. they're working side by side with you. Right, Michael? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just started a partnership with them, so we're super excited. Um, but they're a very enthusiastic, talented group of developers, project managers, designers, kind of the whole nine yards. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to build out that partnership. And, and actually, uh, for everyone that's listening later today, we're going to have an update uh, with about uh, Upstate Interactive, and I'll go a little bit more into detail with them. So let's let's kind of really shift gears here. Um, I'm a big whiskey guy, and I found out that you're a whiskey guy. Neither one of us really drinks that much, but we enjoy fine whiskey, right? Uh, what's, yes. What's your favorite whiskey? Uh, well, so I, I don't drink a whole lot now, but I definitely have had my days. Um, <laughs> yeah, so both, I'm a big, <laughs> yeah, so you know, I get a little older, you tone it back. That's healthy. Um, so I'm a big fan of the Buffalo Trace stuff. It's a little played out in the bourbon world, but, you know, I've I've done a good portion of the bourbon trail and, and visited the distillery and really like the stuff. Um, so I'm a big fan of the stag line stag junior. And then the Buffalo trace antique series, the stag senior is, I mean, it's my favorite whiskey period. Um, and then just like the regular Buffalo trace, we, I'm fortunate in Texas, like most States don't really get a lot of Buffalo trace stuff, but we get a ton. That's right. You're in so Texas, right? Just like the, yeah, the regular Buffalo Trace stuff is is pretty prevalent. So drink that, um, and then Four Roses Small Batch Select is Ooh, pretty I heard, I heard that's available. Super good. And yeah, it's a great great bourbon. So and then what, yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty strictly on the bourbon train. I don't oh really I don't really go a whole lot into the rise or we were talking about Japanese whiskey before the call. That's and, that's you know, my jam. Japanese it. whiskeys are my yeah. jam. Oh man, Scotch and yeah, Japanese whiskey. Well, if you like the peaty, smoky, like lighter taste, then you'll like the scotches and the Japanese whiskeys, you know. But scotch, I mean, scotch is like I'm—I have an addictive personality, so if I get into something, I get into it hard. Yeah. So I'm glad I haven't gotten into scotches yet because that's just like a world of <laughs> of, <laughs> of just like endless possibilities. Which I think that makes scotch really cool, and that you know, I think that's why a lot of people gravitate towards it. That's awesome. And uh, the last, uh, let's wrap up with the last question here. What has been your favorite part about working on the Earth Fund team? I mean, really, just uh, it's gotten me like thinking super heavily about how smart contracts can be interconnected. Um, so, obviously, like, really enjoy working with everyone. It's a super smart team. Every, there's a lot of people with a variety of different skill sets. That's great. Um, and just like how we can write protocols that can make these partnerships reality um has really got my wheels spinning so and I'm change the world that. right and change the world man we're making yeah, a splash well, yeah, man, yeah. i mean yeah make a big difference right i mean i think this is a huge problem like we're helping fund problems but we're also kind of solving like a more macro problem which is like how much friction can be in the like nonprofit sector um, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff going on. This is what I see. Uh, I see that we are on the edge. We are the, the, one of the first, uh, organizations, not, not the only, but one of the first that is, is, uh, the second level, right? So there was this first level of crypto. Now we're the second level where, uh, user interface designers are coming in, right? User experience designers are coming in, experienced copywriters are coming in. Uh, software developers, designers that really like, you know, think a little bit differently. And now all of a sudden there's this huge, huge attention to uh, the blockchain world. And I think we're pretty cutting edge on that, on that side of things, man. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff in like the DeFi world, obviously, um, and applications around NFTs. I, so I would say on like the consumer end, there's really not a whole lot of just true web three gaps that, exists um that's what makes nft so cool in my opinion too is like that's like the first mainstream consumer use case you have you own um, a, you own nfts i got some nfts nice. i'm not super big into nfts but uh i'm i'm more into like DeFi stuff i think that's you know i'm background in like banking so um i think that's super interesting but yeah i i there's going to be a lot i think people realize like how many consumer dApps are going to be coming out over the next decade and a lot of the stuff that you do whether it's 
gaming, social networking, just news, like anything you can think of is, is going to have some pretty big decentralized players that start coming into the space. For sure. I, I agree with that 100%. Sir, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. I'm glad I could learn about you today. Uh, you want to share any socials with anybody? Hey, socials. Um, I'm, I'm pretty quiet, man. If you want to holler at me, get in, get in the Discord. Get and, in the Earth Fund Discord. And what's your name on Discord? I'm at Chili. At Chili. You already know. If you want to ask him questions, hit him up. And, and what, look out for him on that uh, Discord chat or the dev chat. Thank you yes, so much, sir. sir. Hope you have an awesome day. Thank you for being a guest today. Um, uh, I look forward to having our next talk. Yep. See ya. Thanks, Alex. Okay, guys, so please smash the like and subscribe button. Uh, give us some love. Uh, Earth Fun TV will be here uh, every Monday and Friday. We'll have another contributor spotlight. My name is Alexander Vergara. Thank you, Earthlings, and have a great day. Bye.